I don't really have a scripture. I don't know why I brought my Bible up, but I was just thinking, you know, last night and over the evening about the course that we're on. You know, we're we're going through a lot of uncharted waters, and if we stop to count the fish, to kind of look at every molecule of water, we got our eyes on the wrong thing. And I think, and the Lord's showing us that there's a bigger picture. There's a place that the Lord's taking us as a people that's to us is uncharted, but he's got the map. He knows where he's taking us, and he's, he's got it laid out just the way he wants it. And I'm encouraged to know that the Lord is doing a, a thing. It's a, it, we've got a song that we sing, I think Lord gave Sister Alice. It's a strange work, and it's a new. But it's a work that cuts right down to the chase of each and every one of us. And it's bringing us to a place we just haven't been. And we're learning we've got to lean on the Lord. We, we, we lean on each other in the Lord. But we are totally and utterly dependent on the Lord to lead us through uncharted waters. We don't, have, we don't have the ways and the means to know all that he's leading us to. We just know that we have to go in the direction that he's working in us. And I, I think this morning that we can really be thankful more than ever before that we've got a potter and that we can be the clay. I'm just encouraged to know that, that we don't have to worry about what we're going to be, how we're going to be molded, what we're going to be when we're finished. All we have to be is vessels in the potter's hands. As um, Brother Robert was speaking, I couldn't help but think of the chorus. Um, God is moving us on. He is leading the way. He's uh, taking us away we've never gone before. There are mountains to climb and there are valleys to cross. But before us, we see an open door. Um, I, I was just thinking, you know, I, I, I don't know, and we don't, none of us know what the future holds, but by faith we know who holds it. And though there are valleys to cross and there's mountains to climb, this way that we've never gone before, we have before us the door and he has opened the way. When he gave himself for us, even as we sang here this morning, living, he loved us, dying, he saved us, buried, he carried our sins far away, rising, he justified us freely, forever. One day he's coming, oh glorious day. He's before us. He goes before us. He's our rear guard. He overshadows us. He undergirds us. He's on our left hand and on our right. Before us, we have an open door. We can always and forever encourage ourselves in Him and know that though we don't know the way, He does. He's already got it chartered, and He's going to carry us through. I thank Him for that this morning. I thank Him for His unfailing love. And the fact that he's going to see us through. And he, he sees every heart. There's nothing that's hidden from him. He sees every need. I'm, I'm thankful he sees every need right here. I, I know there's great need. I don't know the extent of it. But I know he's more than able. And I praise him and thank him for his unfailing love this morning. Praise God. He's going to see us through. <laughs> well, as the brethren were speaking, I thought of a scripture that we have heard many times in the past, but it, it may well be especially relevant right now, and that's in Ezekiel chapter 20. I believe it's prophetic way beyond the day in which it was uttered. It was uttered by the prophet Ezekiel, who was one of those taken to Babylon along with the captives. When you remember the nation of Israel and Judah uh, were separated at this time, and they had become so rebellious and so full of sin that God finally just judged them. I mean, they had a revival or two along the way, but they just, every impulse of the nation as a whole was to go against God and to rebel, rebel against him. And so he allowed them to be judged and carried away captive into Babylon. Well, Ezekiel was one who was carried along with the captives, 
But God used him to utter prophetic words, to give, to give a message from God to those who were among the captives there. But I believe he was looking way beyond their day to our day in what he uttered here. And uh, let's just say, let's, let's pick it up in verse 30 because he's looking back at the sins of Israel. He says, therefore, say to the house of Israel, this is what the sovereign Lord says. Will you defile yourselves the way your fathers did and lust after their vile images? When you offer your gifts, the sacrifice of your sons in the fire, you continue to defile yourselves with all your idols to this day. I mean, it's hard to believe and the, the conditions were such, but they actually, uh, the Israelites had fallen into the heathen practices of actually sacrificing their children to heathen idols in the fire. Think about how depraved that is and how far from what God has intended. I'll tell you, sin will, like Jimmy says, sin will take you farther than you want to go and keep you longer than you want to stay. And God is calling out a people who are going to be his people from a world that is headed for the fire. I mean, this is not just fantasy. This is something that God, God has already pronounced judgment on this world. It's simply a matter of the time of the day coming. And you and I don't know that day, do we? And, I, and it's, a, it's a very serious matter that I believe God is, God is calling out and he's serious. But anyway, he says, am I to let you inquire of me, O house of Israel? I mean, here they were living like this and saying, oh God, give us a word. You know, get real. <laughs> As surely as I live, declares the Lord, sovereign Lord, I will not let you inquire of me. You say we want to be like the nations, like the peoples of the world who serve wood and stone. And that's always what happens in this world. There is a pull of this world to be like the world. And if God is taking us anywhere, he is taking us to a place where we have been separated from what the world lives for, from what it stands for, from everything about it. It's not to be holier than thou as though we're anything because we're nothing. We're sinners at best, saved by the grace of God. We're no better than anybody else. But I'll tell you, God has a wonderful, awesome plan and a covenant for a people who will listen to his voice, who will submit to him, who will be the clay, who will put their hope and their trust in his provision because there's nothing we can do about our circumstances and our situation. I'll tell you, his plan and his purpose is, is an awesome one. If we can have our eyes open to it and just really commit our way and commit our entire heart to him. That's what he's looking for. But he says, you, you, you say this, you, you say you want to be like the nations. He says, but what you have in mind will never happen. As surely as I live, declares the sovereign Lord, I will rule over you with a mighty hand and an outstretched arm and with outpoured wrath. That sounds like he's serious, doesn't it, you? I'll tell you, it is, it is absol an absolute divine commitment to his plan. It's not a compromise. It's not, here's my plan, pretty please, will you just accept Jesus? Oh, no. This is what Paul declared when he was talking to the Athenians. He said, God has, God has set a day when he is going to judge the world in righteousness by that man that he's ordained. And so his, he commands men everywhere to repent. It's not a suggestion. It's a commandment to turn from the way this world is going, that our whole human family has absolutely set itself against God. There's nothing about us that naturally loves him or wants to go his way. There, there has to be a conquest and a surrender to his purpose if we're ever to be what he, what he created us to be in the beginning. So here's God declaring that something is coming. I've got something in mind. I'm not just going to let you, let you completely perish. I've got a people. People. 